Okay, so, 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 so. Um, let me get my thing. Have a good morning. Have a good morning. Oh, I thought somebody was saying something. Anyway, look, I wanted to, you know, the, um, the lesson I have planned is to do about the 12 disciples, the calling of the 12 disciples. But I wanted to go back a couple of weeks when we finished up talking about the temptation of Christ in the wilderness. Because, you know, we finished up at a bad time because then we took two weeks off. And I think about these things afterwards. You know, because I said that in my notes, I had that Jesus couldn't sin, you know, that he couldn't fall for the temptation. But I said before we got to that part of the notes, I said, but I think I'm changing my mind. Because I think that the sin, that the temptations had to be real in order for Jesus to have faced all things the way that we as men, you know, do it. So I, I thunk on it for a couple of weeks. But I found this um, I found this quotation from C.S. Lewis. Everybody kind of familiar with C.S. Lewis? You know, he was a British, um, okay. actually, he was a British literature professor and all that. But he, I, he got saved and he became a great the, not, not a theologian, but he one of those guys who has these wise sayings to uh, say that even. 60 years after his death, they still pop up on my computer. You know, C.S. Lewis died the same day John Kennedy was assassinated. And all, yeah, and Aldous Huxley also died on the same day of the philosopher. So, mm. and, and Peter Kraft, and Peter Kraft, who's a Roman Catholic theologian and um, uh, philosopher, he wrote a book that it was a conversation between Aldous Huxley, John Kennedy, and C.S. Lewis. I mean, he made, he made it up, but I mean, you know, there was a conversation. Yeah. That, you know, they all show up in heaven on the same day, and here's their, you know, their mm -hmm. But anyway, but I found this, um, I found this interesting that C.S. Lewis said. He said, no man, this is regarding temptation, okay? No man knows how bad he is till he tries very hard to be good. And we don't think about that because we see how we fail at being good, and then we realize how bad we are. He says, a silly idea is current that good people do not know what temptation means. This is an obvious lie. Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. Obviously, if you don't resist it, you know, it's no big deal. After all, you find out the strength of the German army. Now, he's talking in World War II. He says, you find out the strength of the German army by fighting against it, not by giving in. You find out the strength of a wind by trying to walk against it, not by lying down. A man who gives in to temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. This is why bad people in one sense, know very little about badness. They have lived a sheltered life by always giving in. We never find out the strength of the evil impulse inside us until we try to fight us. And here's his point. And Christ, because he was the only man who never yielded to the temptation, is also the only man who knows to the full what temptation means, the only complete realist. In other words, what he's saying is because that temptation was so real and the way he had to fight that temptation, not just wave it off and dismiss it with the wave of his hand, um, shows that's how he knows more than we know what temptation is. But then I had to digest what that said, you know? And so here, here's the conclusion I've come to. Take it or leave it. Your mileage may vary. That we have we have the two natures of Christ, okay? We have his divine nature and his human nature. And in his divine nature, and I think we said this a couple of weeks ago, in his divine nature, he cannot sin. He's God. He cannot sin. But what about in his um in his human nature? I think that he probably could, because you can't separate, you know, you can't separate the two parts. So you can't say, well, in his divine nature, he couldn't, and in his human nature. 
you know, um, you know, that he could. So I, I think that, um, I think that Jesus, I'll take it this way. I don't think that Jesus could sin. Let me put this way. Jesus could not sin because of his two natures. I don't think his human nature knew that he couldn't sin. How's that sound? Huh? Yeah, bad, yeah, bad. yeah. His yeah, his human nature didn't know he couldn't sin. So when he's fighting the temptation, he's doing it in his human nature. Okay, and for for all he, what do I say? For all he could, I can't say figure out. I don't know what Jesus figures out, you know. But in, to Jesus, the temptation was real, and that he was fighting against giving in in his human nature, all along his divine nature, you know, couldn't like that. But the big thing is that you can't separate the two, the two natures. Okay. But, and, and there's heresies. Um, Apollinarianism is that Jesus has a human body and soul, but he doesn't have a divine mind, you know, and you tick in, you tick in unism, is that, um, you know, gives primary concern to his divine nature and kind of sets his human nature aside. But anyway, did you have something? Does that, what? Go ahead, uh, Ray. Does that, does that present sort of like a, a problem in the fact that Jesus is being God and his divine nature is more powerful than the tempter but in the human nature, the tempter is more powerful than than Jesus's human nature. Well, you know, but see, that's almost like trying to separate the two natures, because what, then yeah, what you no, we don't want to do that. Yeah, no, because then what you have is Jesus having an argument with himself. Yeah. You know, I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the good, you know, the good guy and the bad guy on this. You know, so, see, this is where, yeah, this is where we get limited is that we can't say, well, is it, because once we go, is it like, then we've lost it. We just have to take it that I think that in his human nature, he couldn't sin, but he didn't know that, you know, and there's things that in his human nature, he couldn't do, and he didn't do, uh, even though in his divine nature, he could, I mean, in his human nature, he got hungry, he got tired. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't know the date of the father's return. I mean, all those kind of things that we look at, even when he gets angry, you know, uh, the, those things of the human, the human nature, but you can't say, well, couldn't he have overcome those? And it's like, mm, probably not in his human nature, but we don't know how to, how to mm -hmm. separate. Does that confuse it even more? That, I mean that's 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 where I was aiming. <laughs> you know? No, no, but um, pardon, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but that's really that's a lesson in how hard it is to understand Jesus here on Earth. See, today he doesn't. The only limitation he has today, and I don't even know how much of a limitation is, he does have a human body still. You know, but somehow in that human body, see on earth, his human body kept him from being in more than one place at one time. But in heaven, having that human body doesn't restrict him because we say he was bodily present on our altar today and in all the other churches that had communion today. How do you explain that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay. Was somebody else online going to say something? Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to get that part out. Anyway. So, okay. So, I gave the handout. Here's the thing about the 12 um, disciples. I think I may have said this a couple of weeks ago. Is that, so Jesus, is, he, um, you know, we see all the birth scenes and the, uh, the wise men and the shepherds and the uh, Simeon and Anna at the temple and all that. And then he gets led um, to his baptism. And then he gets led out into the wilderness to be tempted. And then right after that, he starts his public ministry. 
So in Matthew, right after the um, the temptation, he's on the mountain doing the Sermon on the Mount. You know, okay. his first public ministry in John is at the wedding of Cana. Um, mm -hmm. it, in Luke, it is um, he goes to his hometown. He preaches in the he preaches in the temple and you know does things. But I don't know when and where it all starts with, when, when did these um, apostles catch him? Okay. I mean, when he went on Sermon on the Mount, he had his, he had his disciples with him. Where did they come from? You know? So that's where you got to kind of, when you're trying to look at the um, Gospels chronologically, you have to go back and put, put them piece by, you know, piece by piece in there. And to do that, I better get my notes. What I gave you was, I have a whole bunch of verses or passages we're going to read. This should keep it so you don't have to be flipping around in your Bible to try to um, try to keep up. The earliest one to go to is First John, or I'm sorry, John 1 and verse 29 the call of the disciples. Because what we're going to see is in John, you know, he has some stuff that happens in the beginning, but we're still in the first chapter. But then he calls some of the disciples. And then from calling some of the disciples, he goes to the wedding in Cana, which is in chapter, you know, chapter two. So, um, so I wanted, I wanted to start, I wanted to start there. Okay. So it says, um, the next day he saw Jesus coming towards him. This is John the Baptist. Okay. So um he's now you gotta read this and kind of think of the timing, you know, because uh, he's gonna announce here comes the Lamb of God. But is this before his baptism, after his baptism? You know, the order is all kind of mush, mush together. He said he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descended um, from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he is he he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain this is he who baptizes with the holy spirit and i have seen and have borne witness of this that this is the son of god so it seems like john is talking in the past you know and this is what happened this is what happened when i baptized him but he's also saying here comes the lamb of god so you know so it says that um Verse 35, it says, Jesus calls the first disciples. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples. Okay, so remember, this is John the Baptist. Standing mm -hmm. with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. So what happens is John's got some of his disciples. You know, John's, John's kind of the head guy up till that point. But as soon as he sees Jesus, well, I can't say as soon as he sees Jesus, because I think he already did the baptism thing. You know, as soon as he sees Jesus, he says, there's the Lamb of God, and says, they left John, 
and followed, followed Jesus. Now, there may have been some preparation from John the Baptist before that. You know, one of these days, you're going to see a guy and you're going to, you know, somewhere along the line, you know, Jesus, uh, John, John the Baptist said, you know, I must decrease, he must increase. So some of these conversations may have already been happening, and then they get recounted later in the story, but they've already happened somewhere. Uh, do the microphone, uh, Hudson. Yeah. Is this uh, Simon, son of John, John the Baptist? No, Simon, son of John is Peter. But, it, but John, it says son of John. Is, is that a son? Oh, no, no, no. His dad is just, you know, you know, his, his dad is Peter. I mean, his, John. John. <laughs> his dad. Yeah. I remember in these stories, everybody's named John, everybody's named Mary, everybody's named Judas. <laughs> Well, you know what? You take a you take a big group, and how many people? Now nobody else is named Gene, okay? But how many people have the same have the same names when you're in a group? You know, you get the John, the Jims, the Larrys, and you know all of those. So Jerry, the Jerry, I know. <laughs> Cherry, Cherry, and Terry. I mean, that's almost the same. <laughs> Well, there was two Simons. I'm sorry, say it again. There were two Simons in wait, the wait, apostles. Okay. Simon the Zealot. Is your microphone on? Yeah. It is? Okay. Wait, let, let Sherry talk. Go ahead. Well, my friend, the virgin in Barbara's cousin. My question is disciple and apostle. All right, good question. I, I've got that later on. What I want to do is I want to just talk about the apostle. I mean, I'll answer your question. But talk about their calling today, and the next week we'll get into who they are. Okay, like that. There's, um, it seems that the apostles, well, it seems that the apostles are more than just disciples. Okay, the disciples are any kind of a follower. It seems like the, uh, and we'll see this as we go through, it's to see some of these people like getting a second calling. Like they have a call to follow Jesus, and then they'll get a call later on. In in Luke chapter five, I don't have the notes. I think it's in Luke chapter five. If you guys don't know your Bibles well enough, you won't catch me in my error. But anyway, <laughs> it talks about Jesus calling the first disciples, and it's when Peter's out fishing. And he calls Peter, hey, let's get, let me get in your boat. He wants to preach to the crowd. And then he tells Peter, or was it Peter? You know, John, one of the guys. Tells Peter, cast your net over on the one side of the boat. And he goes, ah, we've already been fishing all day. There ain't, it's like Havasu. There ain't no fish in this lake. Yeah. Like that. And so he does it. Yeah, you know, and they almost overload the boat and almost capsize it and stuff like that. And then he tells Peter, and John and James, I think. Okay, I'm trying to remember this. He tells them, from now on, you will be fishers of men. Mm -hmm. See, I think that's the difference. I think they had a call to follow Jesus. And I think here they get a special call. And that, I don't know that there was an official title of apostle. You know, but um, but the terms kind of get used interchangeable. But if you look at, I think, John chapter 6, after Jesus fed the 5,000, let me see if I remember that. After he fed the 5,000, and then, um, and then what was it? The, then to avoid the crowds, he walked across the lake, you know, went to the other side. He walked across the lake, and lo and behold, all the people came. And then Jesus told them, you know, I am the bread of life. You know, if you eat my body, this and that. And it says his disciples, all those people, it says were his disciples, and they all couldn't take that teaching, and they all left, mm -hmm. except for the 12. Mm -hmm. So the disciples all left, except for the 12. And they were the 12 disciples, but I think they had that special calling, you know, and I think when that one Thomas said, um, you know, when he said, do you guys want to go too? And the, Thomas goes, where are we going to go? You know, like that. So I don't, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there's places where you can read and people write an article and give a, an official 
you know, uh, you change name badges, you know, from Gene the disciple to Gene the apostle one day when he called, you know, but I don't know. Were you going to say something, Joe? Yeah, I've, I've heard the definition that uh, apostle versus uh, disciple. Disciple is a student or learner, where the apostle is a messenger, one who is sent. Could be. I mean, it, it could be. But then you also have the question between the capital A apostles and the little a apostles. You know, because the original 12 were the capital A apostles and the ones that came after them were the little a apostles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastor, that, well, one of his classes that I took one time, he said that the capital A apostles were the ones who actually saw Jesus. Jesus. It could be, yeah. The others were because they talked about the right. disciples. Right. But then, see, but they were still apostles and not disciples if we go by Joe's definition, which could be right, you know. Okay. The main thing is, is that all this part about the callings looks like it's, um, it looks like it's transitional and kind of ongoing. Um, you know, at least for that period, you know, that period of time. So, you know, and then we've got, um, we're, and we're, I'll read more in this, but, you know, like I said, in Luke 5, before he calls them when he's in the boat, before that, he's already done like three public ministry things. And was he alone doing them or was or? or disciples with him or apostles with him. I read through the passage and I, I don't think it said, you know, the apostles said, right on Jesus, you tell them, you know, when he was doing the things that he was doing. So anyway, any, anything else before I move on? Okay. So he said that you are Simon, the son of John, you shall be called Cephas. Okay. So who do we have called? We had Andrew called and we had Peter called. Okay, mm -hmm. and Andrew is the one who called Peter. Well, I didn't call him, but he gathered him up and said, um, "Yeah, come, yeah, come and see." And and that this goes with what Pastor was saying today. It's not good enough just to go to the manger or just go to you know shout it out on the mountain. You know what you've seen, and that's what Andrew. You know, I'm seeing Andrew. He's probably number four. You know, the big three get all the glory. You know, Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. Andrew's like number four. And, you know, sometimes he gets included and sometimes not, but he's really important. When we get into who they are, you'll see some important things that Andrew actually um, did during the ministry of Jesus. So then it says the next day. So after, so after Peter, James, John, and Andrew, this next day, the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, see, this is important because when people say, Can you find Jesus in the Old Testament? You know, here, um, Philip found him. He said, this is the one that Moses spoke about in the law. Now we all have to go scramble and find out because they didn't. <laughs> he didn't footnote it, <laughs> you know? He didn't say scroll three, you know, <laughs> six, six feet into the scroll. Could you imagine trying to reference those scrolls? <laughs> you know? <laughs> he didn't say it, but he told, he told Nathaniel, we found the one. So it seems like John the Baptist probably did a pretty good job of educating these dumb fishermen. You know, because we, well, we always hear about, you know, <laughs> Jesus chose the common man and, uh, you know, they were poor fishermen or, you know, whatever they were. It sounds like John the Baptist did a pretty good job on them. Was somebody trying to say something online? Okay. Oh, just coughing. Okay. So, he said, Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? How's that for, you know, here you get the, here's the one that, you know, Moses told us about in the law. And his answer is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
Philip said to him, come and see. And that's all we want to do when we witness the people. It's just say, come and see. You don't have to believe me. Come and see. You know? So um, Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. Why is he called the son of God? He goes, how do you know I was under the fig tree? How do you even know who I was? Yeah. So Jesus, so Jesus is kind of throwing that trick back on him that Nathanael was saying, can anything good come out of, um, you know, Nazareth? Um, Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, um, you will see heaven open and the angels of God descending and ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Okay. Now, so there's the calling of six of the disciples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Nathaniel. Nathaniel's also called Bartholomew in some of the other, you know, Gospels. The only one who, and the rest of them, except for Matthew, we don't read about any call. Don't have no idea where they came from, how they hooked up with Jesus, or whatever. Now, Matthew writes about his own calling in the book of Matthew in chapter 9, and he said, as Jesus passed from there, you don't have this in your notes. As Jesus passed from there, he saw a man called Matthew. Remember, this is Matthew writing. Uh, I always worry about these people who talk about themselves in the third person, but that's a different story. Huh. A man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. I, I think these guys have all met Jesus before. You know, I think that he's talking here. I'm guessing. You, know, you have to guess a lot. I'm guessing he knew who Jesus was. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus may have talked to him about being a disciple before or one of the other guys. And so when he says, follow me, it's not just like, some stranger walk, you know, you you're on a jewelry store, and some stranger walks in and says, "Follow me," and you get up and just walk out of your jewelry store. You know, I, I it could be, don't know. No. Gene, I have a question. Yeah, Chris. Who was the second disciple of John that left, and with Andrew? Um, let me see. Okay, where it said that uh, John standing with the two disciples, um, it, was, it may have been John. John's doing the writing, you know, but John never really mentions himself as mm. being you know, the one who Jesus loved and, you know, stuff like that. So I got a feeling it was probably John. Okay. You know, yeah, I'm guessing. <laughs> it doesn't say no yeah no it doesn't say but john's doing the writing john the john the beloved john the apostle is the one who's writing this mm -hmm. about john the baptist got to keep these guys straight can't tell them about <laughs> a program okay about john the baptist and what occurred in john's realm john the baptist's realm okay mm -hmm. so so then we get to who are the 12 you know, who are the 12 disciples? Um, you know, in Luke 6, it, uh, one of the phrases there says, it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. You know? So out of all, out of all these people that he's run into, and all those that he's already said to follow, you know, follow me. Now all of a sudden he's got these twelve, and we don't know who. I mean, we'll find out who those were, but we have nothing that says that he's talked to these other people before. 
But, it, but what does it say? He called his disciples to him. See, I don't know. Again, this is what this is one you you read. You know, I always tell you, I, you know, people say they wander through the Bible. I always say I wander through the Bible. Is you, you got to wonder? It's like, well, wait a minute. So did he have? Did he have thirty disciples with him? And then he chooses these twelve. I thought there was 40. Pardon? I thought there was 40 disciples, and out of the 40, he chose 12. I don't know about but that. But I don't know. I don't remember where I saw the 40, no. so. We'll go with Ray's 40 for now, okay? <laughs> uh, no, but I'm just saying, so he had all these disciples. See, and it seems like everybody's kind of getting these second callings of, okay, you're a disciple, but now you're a disciple specialist or you know something like that mm -hmm. or maybe maybe he's setting up a a board of directors okay uh, you know like um in acts chapter six you know when they had the trouble between the um you know the jewish widows and the hellenistic widows you read acts chapter six you'll know but and they came to the apostles banging on the door saying hey we got this fight on the food distribution and the apostles, being the holy men of God who can only study the Bible and can't get their hands dirty doing the stuff now, they assigned deacons. And they said, here, you, we have to study the word. You guys go out and handle these everyday, you know, these everyday things. So maybe he's setting up, okay, you disciples handle all the, you know, the, I don't know. Setting up, setting up the stage. You guys set up the stage before we get there in town, you know, because we're going from Gethsemane to here to here to here. You guys go out, soften up the crowd, be an opening act, say Jesus is coming. No, no, no. I mean, say, you know, Jesus is coming. Y'all, y'all come and, and you do it. I don't know. But that's, that's important, though. I mean, it's an important job is to let people know who's coming. I read today on one of the Havasu pages on, Facebook that the drag queens are coming, you know, again, again to town. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, so well, so they have front people that come and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, the, I, you know, I make light of a lot of this stuff, but it's to get you interested in maybe you look into it and try to figure out well, who are these who are all these people and what is their position with Jesus? Were they for a certain different purpose? I don't know. Okay, so. Um, okay, so 12 men responded to the call to be called disciples of Jesus. They were Jews, uneducated commoners. You know, this is stuff that we talked about, but they were prepared um for we do know that they were loyal and that they were faithful, except one, you know. But, um, you know, the, so anyway, I've gotten your notes there. We find the names of the disciples in the gospel books of Matthew, in Matthew 10, Mark 3, uh, and Luke 6. So let's, re let's read them. So in Matthew 10, it says... And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the 12 apostles, and the names pretty much go in the same order. In the middle, it kind of reverses on a couple of them, you know, puts one ahead of the other. The names of the 12 apostles were these. First, Simon, who was called Peter and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, and that's Nathaniel. Supposedly, that's what the books say anyway, that Nathaniel was called Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. So you know those guys in the middle you don't hear too much about. You know, um, even Philip, you don't hear much about. Bartholomew, Nathaniel, I mean, other than the listings here. Thomas, we hear about Thomas, Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus. 
That is, okay? So then in the Mark passage, it says, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed 12, whom he also named apostles. And that was what it said in the other one. And have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the 12, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanatrus. Boan, somebody help me here. Yeah, well, the sons of thunder. yeah, the sons of thunder. <laughs> yeah. Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas. See, the Matthew and the Thomas are in a different order. And James, the son of Alphaeus. Um, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Um, and then in the Luke passage, it says, In these days they went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when he came, and when day came, he called his disciples and chose from the chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. And John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, um, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. There's another Judas there, okay? Hmm? And Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. How'd you like that to be your last name? Judas, who betrayed him, and Judas, the traitor. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, I had something I was on to look at first. Let me see. Oh, boy. I had something written out here. No, that's not it. And it was about the order of the order of the names. Um, Jesus calls all these people, okay? It's not like Jesus put up a sign-up sheet. You know how we want stuff done, so we put up a sign-up sheet. Hey, anybody wanna anybody wanna bring? Treats, there's a sign-up sheet back there. Anybody want to um, come take down the Christmas tree? There's a sign-up sheet. Jesus didn't put out a sign-up tree. He just calls the people. Were you going to say something, Noel? I see your light lit up. Yeah. <laughs> Judas Iscariot. Seems to be the only guy. Is that a last name? What? Do we, in, in Iscariot, is the last name? Or do they Judas, no, I think Judas is, well, you know, their last names usually had something to do with their family, you know, so, um, but it's always called Judas Iscariot. I don't think there's anything bad in the name of Iscariot, but somebody can look it up. It's, that's the wonder of cell phones and Google. No, seriously, I mean, you can look it up. Um, I don't know because um, I don't think that, I don't think Iscariot is synonymous with betrayer or or, or traitor or anything, you know, like that. You know, but when somebody's the son of James or the son of John, you know, that's where we get Johnson, you know, and Thompson and, and stuff like, you know, stuff like that. So, um, Gene, who is, who is, who, um, uh, Chris, um, I have a thought and I don't know what it, it's worth. Oh, fact, that's what I was saying. Thought, <laughs> yeah. Um, in Matthew, it says he called his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. I'm thinking that Christ made these, gave these 12, these specific 12, the ability to do these things. The other disciples did not have those abilities. It could, it could be, but he also sent out the 72. And I think they had the ability to do that because when they came back, you know, they talked about seeing spirits falling or Satan falling or, you know, whatever. But did they have the abilities to heal and cast out demons? Um, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, see, here's the thing. Um, do, we I mean, have, I, I, do, we, do we have that ability? Probably Leighton. Probably Leighton. <laughs> What if you prayed over someone who was possessed by a spirit? Wouldn't you be doing that? I mean, none of us would. You think, didn't do that. You prayed for God to do that. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, none of us would think that we 
did it on our own, but we did it through the power of God. And I don't know that you know that the disciples, you have to go back and read some of those stories, I think in Acts, when they did heal people and cast out spirits. I mean, did they do it in Jesus' name and not their own? Because remember, who was that guy? Ah, I always get these flashes. Who was that guy, Simon? Um, you know, who wanted to buy the you know, the gifts of doing that, of casting out. Oh, the gifts. magician. What's his name? He was a magician that wanted to buy the rights so that he no, could do. Buy the rights. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, but see, even though he would think that he could do it, you know, just give me the chance, he doesn't have the spirit of God in him to be able to you know, to do it. Yeah, no, I mean, I know who he was, but I'm just saying it's a, it's like not just everybody could do it on their own power. So I don't know the apostles, I'll look into it. I mean, I'll look into it for, you know, for next week. Cause that's good. That's a good question. You know, it's like, you had to try again, to try to figure out what's the difference between these apostles, these 12 and the, um, you know, and the other ones. So, but anyway, so I didn't put up a sign-up sheet. In John 15, 16, he says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. Okay, that's in John 15. I got, uh, you know, that's the same chapter where he says, you know, you know, I'm the branch, or you're the branch, I'm the vine, you know, and you know, the fruit will come through, you know, come through. But anyway, but so it even sounds like he's talking to the disciples, you know, and says that, um, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And I think that's also that power to be able to cast out demons and you know, so I, I don't think that we understand um, what we've been given as the church. And again, this may be more to the church than it is to the individuals, you know, um, like that for the church to go out and do, that the church has been given certain gifts to do. I don't know so much about the individuals, but... Uh, does that resonate with you, Pastor? Does that resonate with you at all about the difference between the power going through the church versus the individuals? I think I, I think that's where that, you know, I think that's where that comes from. So, so then I have at the bottom of your sheet. Well, we'll just about finish up here. He says, so here's the um the names of the 12 apostles are these, and we kind of read them. It says, first, Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. He'd be John Zebedee also. John the Z, we'll call him. Um, uh, Philip and Bartholomew, who's also Nathaniel. Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, also called. Now, there's argument about this or discussion there's another guy, or there's somebody called John the Less, or James the Less. And most scholars seem to think they're the same. Some say, no, they can't be the same because of this and that. So how's that going to be called James the Less? <laughs> and Thaddeus, who is that other Judas that we read about in the listing on... Uh, Whose list was that in the then uh, in the list on Luke? You know, so remember I said there's the other Judas, is that, and so that would be Thaddeus. And since we don't know much about Thaddeus or that other Judas, you know, and Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. What's the only thing that we Ah, good question. Good question. We got a couple of seconds here. Look at that. Look at all the scribbling I did about the names. No, it's not about their names, okay? We do the same thing, okay? So I mentioned John Kennedy before. Is he John Kennedy? Is he Jack Kennedy? Is he JFK? Who is he? 
Uh, yeah, you know, we do that with Robert Kennedy, you know, is he Robert Kennedy, Bob Kennedy, RFK. How about William? Is William Willie? Is he Bill? How about Leonard? Is he Leonard or Skip? <laughs> no, we <laughs> no, we do the we do the same thing. And so if people have, if people are now the ones where it said, so Jesus named him, that's on purpose. But if it, if there's if Thaddeus is also or Nathaniel's called Bartholomew, and if Thaddeus is called Judas, maybe they went by both names. Yeah, you know, like I say, we do that. And so to identify, you know, um, to identify them, you, you just call them both names, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's anyway. So that's what I think is up. Whoever asked about the names, I think that's what's up with the with the names. I don't like I say unless Jesus names somebody for a certain reason. You know, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and then they got the name Bogenus, which means the sons of thunder. Well, there they picked up a nickname because of some actions on their part when they wanted to call thunder down on their enemies, huh? Fire. Yeah, I wanted to call fire down. Um, so you pick up a nickname like that. Pardon? Smoky. Yeah, Smokey. There you go. <laughs> okay. So we do the, so it's not so unusual if we look back on how we do things anyway so next week we'll go through the list of who they are and talk about what we know about them from scripture um there's some things that you don't really pick up in the scripture but it's there once you're alerted to it you know, you find it. and then they talk some about what these guys did after what they where they go after jesus you know ascended back into you know, send it back. Well, some a couple of them were dead already, but um, you know, what do they do? How'd they die and things like that? Anyway, anyway, so then after we get done going through the disciples, then we'll get into um Jesus's public ministry as far as um, you know, the things you do, like say the wedding at you know, the wedding at Candy Guy, remember, turned water into wine, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, so that's a that's a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody have any questions about anything that? I guess they. Hey, look into it. Fact check me, on some of those on some of those things. I can... Oh yeah. The church scrolling came from. Well, what came from? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think about it. You know, uh, one of the first things that Jesus did, Luke, after the temptation and before he recalled the disciples, was when he went to, uh, you know, the church, and it was his turn to read, and the scroll was brought to him. I don't remember. I I, I just don't remember off the top of my head if it said, and then he spent a half hour looking for it, or if they brought it to him already opened to the place. I imagine it takes some preparation. Now, remember, the whole Old Testament's not on one scroll. It was a whole bunch of scrolls. So you would grab the, you know, the Isaiah scroll was probably three, four, five, I think it was five scrolls, you know, like that. So you grab the right scroll, a little bit easier to, now we don't even want to look in our Bible and we look it up on our phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do it that way. So, okay. If you guys got nothing, hey, G. who G. G. Ray, Ray? Uh, I've been, you know, uh, Deacon uh, Dennis recommended the Chosen, and I've been watching it. I watched uh, the three series or the the three seasons, and they had like seven so episodes of them. But the one thing I found out is that it is. Um, backed up that Angel Studio is actually Mormons, and it's not biblically correct, but it does give you some background as far as who the apostles were and how they were called and so on and so forth. 
Does or anybody, somebody's looking for additional information. Watch, yeah. Does anybody watch The Chosen? You know, Angel Studio, A Angel Studio isn't Mormon. The big guys who produce the shows are Mormons, and that's a that's a difference. You know, um, there they uh, I've only I've watched about ten minutes of one you know of one episode, and, it, and not because I don't care. I mean, it just doesn't interest me. But um, but from what I've heard, is they take license in presenting a story. Mm -hmm. Anybody does. You know, I mean, you can't, we'd all fall asleep if you watched a, some kind of a historical, what do they call those? Um, documentary. Doc, well, not a documentary, they, where you make a movie based on, you know, somebody's history. You know, I mean, if they, you know, if they did it the way that the history, you know, you'd fall asleep in the middle of it. So hopefully, hopefully. The idea with the chosen, and I'm not for it or against it. Hopefully, the idea with the chosen is it makes people ask questions and either go to their own Bible and look it up, or I'm not a Christian, but Deacon Dennis, you are. Can you explain this to me? Because it sounded kind of weird the way that, or I didn't know that, and none of that can hurt, you know. So that that's that's what I think, Ray is. But yeah, the Angel Studio isn't a studio. A studio can't be Mormon. A studio can't be Christian. You can't baptize a studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell people that when they say, "Oh yeah, that's a Christian so and so," and I go, "No, it's not. You can't baptize a whatever that entity is that you're saying is Christian. It may be owned by Christians. They may try to follow Christian, you know, values and stuff. But it's not." But so, there were distributors. Pardon. Angel Studios were the distributors of the Chosen, were they yeah. not? And the two brothers are actually Mormon. Right, no, I said that the, 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 the people are Mormon, you know, but I don't think that the studio itself, I, I don't think it can be. I don't think it can be. I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs and we probably need to. Yeah. <laughs> call, call me at home, I'll tell you why you're wrong. No. <laughs> 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 right, okay, I'm Hudson. call you collect. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Hudson's got something to say, and then we're going to close with the Lord's prayer. Christ gets tax collectors and prostitutes to perpetuate the word of God. I imagine Angel Studios can be Mormon. Oh well, no. I mean, God can use anything and anybody He wants. What I'm just saying is. Is I I don't think that they only make I don't think they make Mormon films, you know. And, and unless somebody's going to show me Joseph Smith pop up in the middle of the, you know, the Chosen, I don't know how they would. How they, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, God can use. I mean, He used a talking donkey, you know. Like He can use whatever, you know, whoever and whatever. He um, he wants. What we have to do is, no matter where it comes from, you you need to listen to the message, digest the message, and then make your make your decision. Uh, you know, off of you know, off of that. So, okay. Yeah. Let's let's close with the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, day our bread. daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive as those we forgive who trespass against us. Against and lead us not into temptation, but deliver but us from evil. evil. The land is the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory, and glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen.